This is a tutorial for Unreal Editor 2 for the original Unreal Tournament Game of the Year edition. In this video, we will cover Capture the Flag Maps. So far, my tutorials have covered general subjects that apply to all game modes. This is a short video to explain what you need specifically to make a CTF map. I've made a small map here to demonstrate. The first thing you should do before you start is save this file as a capture the flag map. So you have to come into view, level properties, level info, and here under default game type, you need to specify that this is going to be a capture the flag game. And how you do that is by clicking on the ellipsis, which brings you to the actor browser and just to show you you're going to go into the actor browser info game info tournament game info deathmatch plus team game plus CTF game so you use this one here and then you come over here and click use and now you have that set up. That's the first thing you need to do. The second thing you need to do is you have to file, save as, and you have to make sure that it is CTF. Let me just show you here. CTF, then a dash, and then name, the name of your map, and then hit save. Now, the second thing you need to do, as I show you here, is you need to have a flag because the flag is the objective of the game and you need to have one for your red base and one for your blue base. So how you do that is you go to Actor Browser, Navigation Point, Flag Base. And then you simply add this flag base to your map. So just a very quick thing to show you here is make sure that your flag base, as I just move this here, you see that? Make sure your flag base is firmly embedded into the ground. So as you can see, it's at least 16 units into the ground because you may have difficulties if it's too high up. All right, so make sure it's good and deep in there. Then this one here is the red base. So what you do is you right click on the flag base, properties, open up flag base, and make sure the team is zero. So remember, zero is the red team, one is the blue team. So you put one here, that's red. And then you put one here, right click, properties, flag base, one. That's it. So you will have a blue flag here. And don't worry that they're both, they both look blue in the editor, but don't worry about that in the game. This thing will be red and it'll be glowing red as well. The next thing you need to do is put a whole bunch of player starts. Now I only did six here because it's a very small map, but really you should be putting at least 16 per team. You click on the player start. and make sure the team number corresponds. So in this case, it's zero, and then make a whole bunch of them. And then on the other side here, this is the blue side, player start, right click, properties, team one. So you have actually all the necessary ingredients right now. You've created your map, you've chosen the CTF game, you've created a flag base, one for each side, and you've created a whole bunch of player starts and made sure that the player starts are have the proper team number, zero being red, one being blue. Now, if I were to run this map now, you will find that the bots will always just go, the short. they'll always take the shortest path from one flag to the other. And that means just going through the house here. That's all they're gonna do. They will never use the other walkways that you've 
planned out. So the next thing I want to show you is this guy, which is called an alternate path. And how you get that is you go again, actor browser, navigation point, alternate path. And I just did one per team to show you, but really you should have one of these for every route in your map. You right click on it and choose a team number. And you can see the selection weight. So you will need to adjust this. The higher the number, the more favored it's going to be. But you have to really play test your map to make sure that the bots are going to take all of the different paths that you have made in your map. So I put one here. This one's team zero, that's red. And then I put one on the other side here, team one. So you now have alternate paths. This way you, it'll encourage your bots to take other routes, not just the, not just the central one. And then the final thing that I want to show you in this short video is defense point. And again, defense point has to match the team. And as a little added bonus, I put B sniping equals true. So that means that the bot will be happy just to sit here with a sniper rifle and pick off people. This is pretty much all you need. The only thing that I won't cover in this tutorial, but you can easily check on the web, is what's called a distance view trigger. So I come up here, actor browser, trigger, distance view trigger, which needs to work with a normal trigger. That's two pieces that you need. And I'm not going to show it here because this is a very small map, but in a map like Facing Worlds, where you have the bots sniping at you, you need the bots to be able to also snipe at the other snipers, if you will. And so you'll be putting these triggers because it's a very, very long distance and normally the bot wouldn't see that far. So it's just a little helper to make the bots better defenders. And it's only because, as you know, Facing Worlds is a really, really long, long map with long distances, great for sniping. Let's take a look at it in the game. So what I've done is I started the game in spectator mode. And this allows me to just pan my camera over here and see how the bots respond. Are they able to take the flags? Are they able to use the alternate paths? And are they able to pick up all of the weapons and ammo that you put on the map? And here's the bot in defense mode. So once you've built a rough skeleton of your CTF map, make sure you play as a spectator, observe the bots, observe all of the defense points that you've set up. Are they taking the alternate paths? Are they picking up all of the weapons and health that you've placed? Is it easy to retake the flag? Is it difficult? Is it too defensive or too offensive? These are things that you can only tweak after watching the bots. And you can also try six bots, eight, 10, 12, just to see how the dynamic changes as well.